Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share something really special with you guys. And it's pertaining to Valentine's Day. Now when we think of Valentine's Day, you think of boxes of chocolates and flowers and romantic dinners and all of that just equals a whole bunch of money. And that's money that a lot of us don't have right now. But we can have an amazingly romantic Valentine's dinner at home. Um, through folklore and whatnot, it has morphed itself into this significantly cultural, huge holiday that is... So for Valentine's Day this year, we are going to have a romantic dinner in. I just... I just find that Valentine's Day actually puts a lot of pressure on people. You have to come up with the perfect gift to say I love you and the expectations that someone might have. And it's a meal that he absolutely loves. But because of how long it takes, it's not one that I cook for him very often. It's no secret who my superstar chef is, someone who I... And I actually loved public television. Love, 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 loved it. My favorite chef was on public television, Julia Childs. And I know I've told you this before, I adore that woman. I love the fact that she didn't learn to do any type of cooking until she was in her 40s. I did not learn to love cooking until I was in my 30s. And I really didn't hone on that skill until I hit my 40s. But what is one recipe that comes to your mind when you think of Julia Child? I know what mine is. That's right, bouffe bourguignon. It's easier than you think it is. It's a time-consuming process, but it's time-consuming because it takes so long in the oven to... You know. And there's a few different components to this dish. But they all happen in steps, and it's so easy to do. And yes, it is a glorified beef stew, but it is a beef stew that will blow your mind with flavor. It's impressive. Just the name, Bouffe Bourguignon. It sounds like you just spent a million dollars on this meal, and you don't have to. The best part about this meal because of how it's cooked, you can actually just buy a cheaper cut of beef, stew beef even, nothing high end. You do not have to purchase the chuck roast and cut that all up into your pieces. You can buy cheap stew meat. And when this dish is done, it is going to taste like you used filet mignon to make this dish. It will fall apart in your mouth. My husband's favorite favorite dishes that I make and I haven't made it for him in a while and I thought what better day than Valentine's Day. I'm even going to show you an amazing tablescape to go with this dinner. Yes, I'm going to do all that with you today. So I'm just dressed for the occasion. I know it's not Valentine's Day yet and I will be making this again for him on Valentine's Day. But I wanted to share it all with you so it's something that you could do for your loved ones, your significant other, whomever you have in your life that you want to impress with this amazing meal that actually doesn't take a whole lot to put together. This dish is for you. So why don't we head over to the stove and get this going. All right, so we have some bacon. And we're just going to take about six ounces, which to me, I'm literally going to cut this in half, and that's what I'm going to use. And we're going to dice it up. I have some olive oil in my cast iron Dutch oven on the stove, and we're going to take it from there over to there. Okay, we have our... Dutch oven and I have a little bit of olive oil in there and to that I'm just going to add the bacon. And we're just going to let this go until it's nice and crispy.
All right, my bacon is nice and crispy. Looks really good. And now what I'm gonna do is remove it from the pan with a slotted spoon. And I'm just gonna put it into a little dish for right now. And there we go. Now, to this hot pan, we are going to add our beef. And this beef has been dried with a paper towel. And we're going to do it in batches. We just want to brown it. We're not cooking this, we're just browning it, just to get a little color onto that meat. See that? This looks so much better on my last batch, but I just wanna show you what I mean by dry my meat off. Julia Child said it best. If you don't dry your meat, it won't brown properly. The boy, she wasn't kidding. You need to dry this meat good. I just use a paper towel and take all the moisture off of it. A couple more pieces. This is the last batch to go in. Rub it good. And you can see you're taking the moisture off of it. Okay. Brown my meat. And what we're going to do is I just have a onion, small onion sliced, and a large carrot diced. And we're just going to add this to our pot. And now we're actually just going to brown up our vegetables a little bit. Our carrots are now browned, our onions are now browned, and what we're going to do is add our meats back into this dish. Um, we're going to do the bacon, and then we're also going to put our meat in, and we want all of the juice from that pan as well, all flavor. So we'll give that a little stir. I wish you could smell what I am smelling right now. All right, so we have that in there. And now I'm going to add some salt and pepper. And I'm also going to add some flour. And we are going to stir this to coat everything up really good go. And then this hot mess is going to go into our preheated oven for four minutes. After the four minutes, I'm going to stir it and it's going to go another four minutes. So. So our eight minutes is up in the oven and this is actually going to have an amazing crust on it from what we just did. Julie Child knows what she's talking about. Listen to her. So now we're going to get our red wine in, but I need to use a strainer because when I was opening my red wine, a little piece of the foil fell in the bottle and I watched it go into the measuring cup. I don't want that in my stew. It's real life people. So I'm going to add our red wine. stuck to the side, to the bottom there, so I'm good. <laughs> and also to that, we're gonna add about three cups of beef stock, which I'm not gonna actually need the whole thing of beef stock, because what you wanna do is you just want to cover the beef, um, and that's what I did. 
And I feel like another cup would just be too much. We don't need that much. So I think I'll stop with the two. And it is two to three. I mean, now to this, I'm going to add my garlic. And that is just smushed garlic. <laughs> At least that's how Julia Childs puts it. Some tomato paste. Tomato paste. I'm going to give this a stir to get that tomato paste all incorporated in there. And then to that, I'm going to drop in two bay leaves. And I have a little thyme bundle that I've just done up with some kitchen string. I'm just going to drop that in there as well. I'm going to put the lid on this pot and I've reduced the temperature in my oven to 325 degrees. So we're just going to put this in there and it is going to braise for three to four hours. That makes all the difference. So we're going to get going to the second part of this dish now. So in this pan, I am going to heat up um, some butter and some olive oil. I've also tied a little bundle of my thyme. I did forget that I needed fresh parsley, which is fine. So I'm actually going to be using um, my dried parsley. It doesn't make a difference. And remember that cup of beef stock we had left over? We'll be using it in here. So we just want the foam to subside just a little bit. There. And now we're going to add our pearl onions. There's some big old pearl onions in there. And we're just going to cook these until they are lightly browned. Once they're lightly browned, then we're going to add some herbs and some stock and we're going to cover it and let it go for a little while. Okay, so our onions are slightly brown. And now what I'm gonna do is add my bundle of uh, thyme. I'm gonna add a bay leaf. I'm going to add a bit of parsley. And I'm also going to add a half a cup of that leftover beef broth that we have. And we are going to put a lid on this. And we're going to cook it for about 30 or 40 minutes until most of the liquid has been evaporated. And then once that's done, we'll just transfer it to a bowl and set it aside. So I'm going to set my timer for 30 minutes. So the last component to putting together the bouffe bourguignon, well, it's not really putting it together, but the last piece of the puzzle we need to make the bouffe bourguignon come together is the mushrooms. Easy peasy. Let's get right to that. Pan, we just have a little bit of oil, a little bit of butter. We want to let it get foamy, let that subside a little. And then we're going to cook our mushrooms in bat batches. Because as Julia Childs has famously said a million times, don't crowd the mushrooms, otherwise they won't brown. So we're not going to crowd them. What we're going to do is I took my mushrooms out of my freezer and let them thaw. Um, you can hear the microwave in the background. That is actually leftover loaded mashed taters that I'm defrosting to go with this. And I'm just going to put some of the mushrooms in. And we are going to cook it in batches because we don't want to crowd them. And first the mushrooms are going to absorb the liquid and then they're going to brown. The 
smells in my house right now. Oh my goodness. Julia would be so proud of me. The mushrooms are done. I've taken them out of the pan and I've set them in a bowl. They can just sit and wait now. The onions are almost done. Let's give them a check. So our timer has gone off for our onions. Ooh, that looks good. Now I'm going to take my thyme bundle out of there. We'll dispose of that. And then all I'm going to do is add these to the dish with the mushrooms. Take the bay leaf out as well. Forgot about that. Now I'm just going to cover that with a little bit of foil and just leave it there until the bouffe bourguignon is ready because this will go in the bouffe bourguignon and the vegetables that are actually in there cooking now do not stay in the bouffe bourguignon. So let me just cover these up and we'll get on to our next item of business. So another part of Valentine's Day if you're trying to make a romantic dinner at home, is ambiance and details. It's easy enough. I stopped at Heritage Flowers and I picked up a beautiful bouquet of flowers that I am going to put into that little antique, it's not an antique, antique looking milk jug that I got at the thrift store. And then I said, oh, I get to use my candlesticks too. So I went and got some candles. <laughs> Easy enough, right? All right, so first things first, I'm just gonna take my candles, give them a good turn, make sure they're straight. Now, if you also have a candle holder that um, doesn't necessarily hold your candle very well, if you use a lighter on the end of it and then stick it in, it's perfect. It'll harden, the wax melts with the lighter, obviously. You slide it in, it hardens, and it holds its spot. It won't tip, it won't do anything. But these ones happen to fit in pretty darn good. So, very happy with that. Wish they have red, but I'm good with the white. So there we have some beautiful candles for the table. Now I need to work on these flowers. And it's very exciting. I feel like this bouquet will be too heavy. Didn't they do an amazing job? Look at this. It's just absolutely gorgeous. We have hydrangeas, we have carnations, we have roses, we have greenery, we have flowers. I don't even know what they're called, but they're beautiful. Now before I put water in my vase, I actually want to see how, if I left it like this, that's actually pretty darn good. I don't think I'm going to mess with it. I think I'm going to actually add water and put it right in. And I work with Darlene a lot at Heritage Flowers. They are located in Lakeville, Massachusetts. Um, I do a lot with her. She's who I get my fresh flowers from when I'm doing my anniversary cakes and my wedding cakes and sometimes even birthday cakes people want fresh flowers on. And she is amazing. I can go in there, I can go behind the counter, I can go in the cooler, I can walk around, I can look at anything and everything I want and pick exactly what I want. Um, I Uh, 
Um, I did not pick these flowers. I said what I wanted. I wanted red, white, pink, and green. I said run with it. And they did. And they did an amazing job. So all I'm going to do to this is add some water in this vase. And I'm going to keep this exactly as it is. Perfect. And now I want to keep the little handle in the front. So that is going to be the front of my vase, my vase. They were nice enough to wire the flowers for me to make it easier to get in here in case this would all fit because I wasn't sure if it would or not. And it's beautiful and it's perfect just the way it is. So now that this is done, let's get going on our table and make that just as pretty. I had some loaded taters left over. Um, actually, I think these are from, from Thanksgiving, but they're delicious. And my kids actually call these mama's taters. And I basically make them with sour cream, um, cream cheese, butter, herbs, milk, um, 
all kinds of goodies go into Mama's Taters. They are a staple with my children. So all I've done is thaw them out. And I'm going to stir them up a little bit. I'm going to take my pastry bag. Oh, these things just stick so hard. Come on. <laughs> and I'm going to use my big rose tip because I like how this looks. Again, we're just going to slide it in. Get it as far in as it will go in the tip. Take your scissors. Right around the edge. Pull it off. You don't even need a collar. This is like the easiest way to add a tip to a bag. I'm gonna fold it over. Make a nice collar on it. And I'm just gonna take some of my potatoes. I actually think I need a bigger spoon for this. Like a deep spoon. them in there. All right, so we have our potatoes in the bag with the tip. I have just a little piece of parchment paper on a cookie sheet and now all I'm going to do is make some castles. Hot, heated it up too much. <laughs> you just make them look like little tiny castles. That's it. That's literally all there is to this. They're like little castles. Now to these, we are simply, because they're already seasoned, they have um, cream cheese in them, they have cream in them, they have sour cream in them, there's all kinds of salt and pepper and herbs and spices. So all I wanna do is just add a little bit of parsley to the top and they're already cooked. All I had to do was heat them up. So when I take the Bouf Bourguignon out to get that ready, I'm just going to pop these in just for a minute. They're already cooked. It doesn't take anything. And you have cute little potatoes. It has been hours and hours and hours and hours. Four hours. And our Bouf Bourguignon is ready to come out. Now before we look at that, we're going to take our castle potatoes and we're just going to stick them in the oven. They're already cooked. They're heated from the microwave. I just want to give them like a little crunch. Now on to the good stuff. I'm excited. Let's have a look-see, shall we? <laughs> that smells amazing. Look at that. Oh, oh my, yes please. So still just a couple little things we have to do and this is ready to be devoured. 
So the first thing that we're going to do with this amazing bouffe bourguignon is I'm going to use a slotted spoon. I'm going to find my meat. I'm going to take it out and I'm just going to set it in the bowl with the onions and the mushrooms. So excited for this. Haven't made it in a little, little while. Everybody thinks, oh my gosh, it just takes so much to do that. I don't have the time and blah, blah, blah. Well, if you're home all day, you have the time to do this. All right, that's all the meat. I am going to take a little bit of carrots out. I'm going to put those in there because my husband does like the carrots. If you do it the Julia Child way, there are no carrots in her bouffe bourguignon. So, we'll keep a few. All right. I've got my amazing pile of bouffe bourguignon. Like, oh my gosh, how good does that look? How delicious does that smell? Mm. All right. Got it on my finger, had to try it. Very good. So what we need to do is we need to take this over to the sink and I'm going to run this juice through a strainer because I want the juice and not the herbs, not the carrots, not the onions. I don't want anything out of this anymore. It All right. I'm going to turn this around so the handle's not in my way. We're going to dump this in. Be very, very careful. This is extremely hot. And I'm talking about your cast iron. And we're just going to kind of push gently because you want to get as much of the juice back out as you can without necessarily squishing the vegetables through. We just want this delicious juice. This will not go to waste. This will go in the fridge and will go to my chickens tomorrow. Minus the herb bundle and minus the bay leaf. But there's really not that much there. Just a little bit. So we did really good. We've got our delicious juice. And we're ready to continue. Just look at that. Oh. So good. Now we're going to add this back to our pot. And remember that also has the onions and the mushrooms in it, which is exactly what we want. And then we are also going to take this glorious, glorious juice. We're going to add that right back in. As a matter of fact, I'm going to use a spatula and I'm going to make sure that we get all that juice. It's that good. Just look at that. Oh, so, so good. So rich. So sinfully rich. This is such an impressive meal. And although it did take a few hours, it's all baking time. It's all time spent in the oven. What you really have to do to create this meal is basically nothing more than you would have to do for any meal. Maybe one or two more steps. Whoopie-doo. This is impressive. And you know, as the cook, you know the rules. You have to try this. So, I'm going to try a little bite. <laughs> mm. That is so good. That meat is fall apart tender. Like I said, you can use the toughest cut of meat. And because we cooked it this way, 
it's like filet mignon. You don't even have to have teeth to eat this. That's how tender this meat is. <laughs> that flavor profile is amazing. You can taste the red wine, but not in the sense of it being a red wine. You taste it in the sense of enhancing that broth with this amazing richness. You can taste the thyme, the onions, a little bit of garlic, everything's just a hint. It's all in such a perfect, cohesive harmony. Julia Child knows her stuff. I will give her that. This. Now the real question is, <laughs> do I call my husband in to let him know dinner is ready or do I eat it all myself? So that's it. Dinner is done. It's about as romantic as it's gonna get around to you. You try it? I think I've had this before, right? Yeah, you love this. Oh mm. It's just fall apart. Oh, definitely. Just falls apart. Like I was saying, the best thing about this meal is you can actually take like a crappy cut of meat and because of how it's cooked, it just turns it into like filet mignon. Mm. You add a little nice crusty Parisian bread to it. Sop up all that delicious juice, a little castle potatoes. You could even take your potato and dip that in the juice. Mm. It's better than last time. You think so? I don't know what you did dip different, but... I actually did do a step differently this time. I think I did this one with flying colors. Mm. That's why I don't talk much, because I'm always eating. <laughs> it's been a while. So, yeah. from our house to yours, happy Valentine's Day. And it's just so simple to do. You don't have to stress over it. It shouldn't be a stressful holiday. Make it easy. Make it simple. Make it personal. I like nothing better than spending time with my husband. This means more to me than anything. Because we all know I'm by myself all the time. <laughs> We're telling stories about me again? No. So... Happy Valentine's Day, babe. Happy Valentine's Day. Love you. Love you. Excellent. In the infamous words of Julia Child, Bon Appetit! So once again, a nice, easy-peasy Valentine's dinner that's oh so filling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. One of the favorites of his, and it'll impress anybody that you make it for. So I will link the recipe down in the description for you. It does take a while to cook, but it's all in the oven. You don't have to worry about anything else. The exact same time it would take you to make a regular meal, you can make Julia Child's Bouffe Bourguignon, and you will impress everybody when you do it. So thank you so much for joining us. Hope that you enjoyed this particular meal. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. We have so much more coming up. And what's next? Uh, oh. I don't know. More of this in a minute. <laughs> more off camera. We're, and tomorrow we're going to try our cowboy candy. It's Ooh. time to try that. So we Sounds promised good. we'd show you. Can't and wait. we will. 
Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.